Man, uh, just a, a great team win by our guys. Um, you know, we, we talked about trying to get out in transition uh, in running against them, especially with them coming back from the East Coast. Uh, we tried. Uh, they did a pretty good job for, for um, you know, coming back from the East Coast. That's how I feel. I'd like to yawn, too. <laughs> uh, um, but the neat part about it is we had seven fast break points. They had zero. Uh, so that was great. Uh, we also talked about um, uh, trying to offensive rebound because we did a good job, I think, in our last game against them. I think we had 21 second chance points. And our guys were great. We had 20 offensive rebounds. Uh, Domus was a workhorse on the glass. He had seven offensive rebounds. I mean, he had a 20-20 game, almost a triple-double. Just unbelievable. I think it, that's his 70th double-double uh, uh, on uh, in a row, right? Is it 70th in a row? What is What? How many? He got – he got – Domus got so many damn records. Uh, I can't figure it out, but he – hell of a job by him. Um, it, you know, you, you even look at a guy like Keon. Keon took one shot. He was in foul trouble. But it, it, he plays uh, 21, a little over 21 minutes. He has seven rebounds. You know, you're talking about your two guard getting seven rebounds in 21, 22 minutes in a game. Uh, he impacted the game. So he was he was uh, great. Um, but, you know, I, I thought our guys, they, they played, for, you know, we always say play together. And, and uh and I saw a post-game comment by Kelvin, uh, talk by Kelvin Sampson, and he, he was talking about how his guys play for each other, and I think that's the better way to play, a better way to say it. You know, we want to play fast, we want to play physical, but we want to play for each other, and uh, there are a lot of different ways you can do that, and 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 you know, one of them. Uh, is the thing that I'm harping on all, all the time is spray the ball, spray the ball, spray the ball, go from a good shot to a great shot. And when we do that, usually good things happen. And, you know, we had 21 sprays tonight. Our goal is to get to 20 sprays. We had 21 sprays tonight. And just them have, having to run around, whether you make the shot or miss the shot, them having to be in rotations and run around, I tell you what, that gives you an advantage, A, because it continues to wear them down, but B, it gives you an advantage on the offensive class because they're just running around, closing out, trying to talk, trying to communicate. Now you can go eat that offensive glass up if you're missing shots. So uh, the, the, the 21 sprays was, was, was just beautiful to watch. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I thought our bench was absolutely fantastic. Um, Davion was – and he's been really good for us. You know, we talk about trying to find the scoring that we're missing with, uh, you know, Kevin being out and with Malik being out. And, you know, Davion, he's taken on a little bit more of the scoring load for us and playmaking load. He's been – Fantastic on both ends of the floor. Uh, Trey, uh, man, he, he just he plays so hard, and he's another big body, and uh, you know he can shoot the ball. He spaced the floor, but he, you know his 15, Davion's 14. How hard those guys play! How impactful they are defensively. Uh, but at the end of the day, freaking Alex Land, man, what a man he was tonight. I mean, the three blocks he played. 12 minutes, and he was a plus 18 in 12 minutes versus a very good Clipper team. He impacted the game on both ends of the floor. He just plays the right way. He was, he played a beautiful, beautiful game of basketball uh, in the short amount of time. And you speaking about talking about seven rebounds, he had seven rebounds in those 12 minutes. So he was our DPOG. Uh, fantastic game by him. But uh, more importantly, I mean, the Clipper team. You hold them to 40 percent from the field and, and 95 points. Just a big, big, big win for us tonight. Mike, what does what does this do? These last two wins. What do you feel it maybe does for not only their confidence, they're obviously a confident bunch, but maybe in your own confidence to realize that maybe you can pull. You're maybe capable of maybe pulling this off a little bit. No, you know, we, we've we've always been confident throughout the course of the year, and you know we. You just run into new things that you got to figure out, you know, and whether it's the expectations, the injuries, however you want to call it, there are going to be new challenges that are going to be in front of us. And we have to just keep finding a way. I mean, had a big win up in Minnesota, missing missing Fox, you, you know. Um, Malik stepped up. And I, so, we, again, we have confidence in our guys. Our guys have confidence in each other. Obviously, every win that you – 
put together, especially during this time of the year and versus quality opponents, it continues to add to that belief because I'm, I'm a huge believer in that, uh, that mojo stuff, you know, and the, the stuff that you can't chart or the stuff that doesn't show up in analytics. And so every win at this point versus these quality teams, especially when we're in the position we're in, continues to add to the belief. But uh, it, uh, it was there. Um, you know, we just needed to figure out how, you know, how we want to play. And I think after the All-Star break, post-All-Star break, our guys made a commitment to each other of trying to trying to get stops, knowing that at the end of the day, we'll find a way to score most nights. Uh, but the, sh the shot may not always go in. And so we give ourselves a chance to win. we got to get stops and try to win the possession game. And, 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 and that's really how we got to win versus quality team. I mean, we scored 109 points, you know, and, and – you know, before, you know, I, what I was afraid of was, you know, everybody kept saying, we got to score 120 to win. We got to score 120 to win. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't have to. If we can get it done in the possession game and if we can get it done defensively, at least to our capabilities. And our guys are starting to show that now. Mike, you talked about the post All Star break. What are you seeing from Davion? Because it feels like a weight's been lifted off of him and he's just playing basketball. <laughs> he's not thinking so much out there. No, he, he is playing basketball, but also uh, I, I'm giving him an opportunity. So, you know, there, there was a stretch there where, uh, you know, Keon started playing well. And so I was playing Keon in front of him. And then I throw Davion back in for a little bit. Then I pulled Davion back out. And so as a young player, if you're not quite sure what your uh, – your your, your uh, playing status is going to be from game to game. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time adjusting, and you have to dig deep and look within to try to stay locked in no matter if you get two minutes, zero minutes, or 30 minutes. And to his credit, <clears throat> he's done that. And now we've been more consistent with his minutes, and he's got a better feel of when he's going in and when he's coming out and all that. And and then we've also given him a lot more freedom as time has gone on. And, and with that freedom, he's handled it the right way, but he's starting to show that uh, – or he's starting to show that uh, of what he's capable of, not just as an on-ball defender, but as a shooter and as a, and as a scorer. And he's works really, really, really hard in the off season uh, he, on his offensive game, and I'm just happy that it's uh, starting to show because it's, it's, it needs to show at the right time, and, and right now is the right time. Hey, Mike, going back to the bench a little bit, it might, sounds crazy to say with Malik not being there, but this might have been one of the more most impactful bench performances of the season. I'm curious, just in your experience, the significance of a role that bench plays in developing and becoming a championship program. Uh, it, it, it plays a huge role because um, during the playoffs, anything can happen from injuries to whatever you want to call it. And, you know, to, to get guys to um, be able to feel this type of game and, and have some success or have some adversity and try to figure it out the next time around, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't I can sit here and talk to them until I'm blue in the face about my experiences. Sometimes they just got to go through it. And so to be able to get the production that we're getting from the bench gives them the belief, you know, that we were talking about earlier that we all need to have, especially some of these guys that haven't played big minutes in a significant role in the playoffs. And, you know, even our starters really haven't because I don't, I, I don't, you know, I think uh, um, uh, HB is the only one that's been past the first round that plays significant minutes for us that's in a significant role, you know. And, and so to get <clears> – <throat> minutes and have success from our bench guys like that, again, it just adds to the belief that you need to have uh, going into the playoffs because you can have foul trouble, you can have injuries, crazy stuff has happened and you need guys to be comfortable, not only as individuals to be able to step up, but you need the, the teammates need to feel comfortable uh, with, with anybody being out on the floor. Mike oh. Keegan's dunk, was that the wiggle you were talking about last year? That was a little, okay. Keegan's starting to get a little wiggle now. It's about time, Keegan Murray. <laughs> uh, we don't know. I don't know when the next time we're going to be able to talk to you before you go on this East Coast trip. Just how important is it to take care of business in New York, in Boston, over the next couple of days? Yeah, again, whether we go East or, or we're here, these games matter. Every time we step out on the floor, 
we have to be locked in and we have to try to get wins because there's still a chance for us to move up in the standings. There's still a lot of games left. Everybody is really, really tight. Uh, our guys know what's going on. I know what's going on. We know Dallas lost tonight. Um, so we have to be able to take care of what we can. And if we do that, we just see what unfolds with the rest of the league. Coach, like like he said a little earlier uh, about Keegan last year, you was always telling him to like go dunk on guys or whatever. And now, seems like every week he's attempting or he's he's dunking on somebody. Do you think he got the message? And um, is um, is that a part of? Does that show some part some some part of his progression this season? No, for sure. And Keegan, you know, like I said last year, Keegan was primarily a catch and shoot three point shooter. And this year, he's shown the ability uh, to defend at a high level, to rebound uh, at a high level, um, and to score from all three levels. And you're right. You know, last year when, when we when we talked to him about uh, um, going to the rim, he didn't need to fade and shoot a running hook. Or he he's so strong. He's a big man. And uh, he can play with some force, and uh, it's starting to show. And again, we need that with 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 uh, Malik and Kevin out. Um, we need him to step up and to score from all three levels and do it with some force. Because um, you know, anytime he goes to the rim, he's a capable finisher. While uh, uh, while getting fouled, you know, the, his next step now. You know, everybody's jumping at every. All he's got to do is look at the rim, and guys are flying. When he drives, he looks at the rim, guys are flying. And now he's got to be able to have some gamesmanship within his game. And if he gets a guy up in the air, shit, go right into his body. To draw that foul, because you got the guy out and finish at the same time, he still kind of pump fakes and steps through and lets the defense off the hook. Uh, but I, he's definitely heading in the right direction. He's made a ton of progress, and it is much needed by our team right now. Uh, Mike, we know you know what kind of lift uh, Trey gives this group, and and how everybody feels about him. Is, to lose Kevin and Malik, but but then to have Trey and also Sasha come back at the same time, is that kind of provided a little bit of a you know a spiritual lift for the the rest of the group? Yeah, I mean you, you know it's, it's, again, I, I give our guys credit against Dallas. They 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 fought. Um, you know we didn't we had some empty possessions down the stretch because uh, you know we weren't obviously. Ex Expecting Malik to go down, and and we were trying some some things that Malik has a pretty good feel for with Fox out on the floor, and and um, and then we had to play HB and and Keegan extended minutes, and you know having Trey gives us the ability to continue defending the way we like to defend against Dallas, uh, but giving HB uh, a little bit more rest um, throughout the course of the game. And uh, so, uh, again, having those two bodies, those two veteran bodies, uh, it just helps our overall depth. And uh, which is uh, which is very very much needed, and then it helps our spacing because both those guys can shoot the ball and and they know how to play uh, uh, basketball the right way. <clears throat> uh, Mike, um, obviously you've talked a lot about like through the whole season that the Kings this group needs to find like different ways to win, like if the yeah. shots not going out, things like that. How gratifying is it to you to see a win like this? Obviously, you know you shot I believe it was twenty eight percent from three. Sure but obviously you still beat a good Clipper team pretty handily. So how gratifying for you after that's been the message all year is a win like this? It, 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 the, the thing I like about it is this is how you win in the playoffs. Um, you don't win in the playoffs averaging 125 points a game and thinking that's how you're going to win. That's fool's gold. You just look back at the teams in the past that were high-scoring teams. Fun to watch. I enjoy watching them during the regular season. But they were out after the first round. If they got lucky, maybe the second round. And you just look at the history of NBA champions. It, it, I don't think there are many NBA champions that finished outside of the top ten on the defense and the defensive side of the floor in the last 25, 30 years. There might be a couple because there are some exceptions from time to time. Um, but you have to have a balanced team. Your offense has to be pretty good. Uh, but your defense has to be exceptional because when you get to that second, third round, I mean, it is, uh, oof, it is tough. And that shot ain't going to always go in. 
Now you go from having media coverage of maybe 15 or 10 people. You got 50, 75 media members watching your every move. You got your family asking for, t you got all these expectations. It's crazy. And one thing you have control over is how hard and how physical you play defensively. And if you believe that, you're going to have a chance. And for me, uh, our group is heading in the direction that they need to head in order to have some success come playoff time. It's no guarantee, but I, I'd rather have more control on the defense. I'd rather have more control for us knowing that we can defend and knowing that, hey, we got a pretty good chance of scoring. I'd rather have it that way than, oh, man, well, this shot better go in <laughs> because it ain't always going to happen. Coach, you may have just answered this question right there, but both uh, Trey and Davion, when they came out, they talked about the game plan and how well the team followed the game plan. So as the coach, what pleased you the most about the way the team followed the game plan? And do players get any special considerations in practice if they publicly praise the game plan as they did this evening? Yeah, you, you fellas, if y'all continue to say I'm a hell of a coach when you come up here, I'll give you a day off here and there every once in a while. <laughs> no, no I, you know what, our, our, our group, I tell you, you know, it, it, we played a lot of games. We've been injured. And so, you know, especially Fox and Domas, we put a lot on their shoulder, which we're supposed to, and we're going to continue doing that. Um, a lot of games in a short amount of time. Guys are leaving it out on the floor. So we haven't had a lot of practice time. And we've tried to prioritize rest uh, over, hey, come in and execute this and do this better and that better. And I give our guys a ton of credit because – you know, we're doing it by watching film and walking through stuff and not doing a lot of – I don't think we've had any physical contact now. Our low, uh, low guys that don't play, we have a next group, you know, Colby, JaVale, and those guys, they, they got to bang heads before practice starts so they can keep their rhythm. But our top eight, nine guys, they don't do that at all. And, uh, uh, like, uh, um, we didn't have shoot around today. We had a walk through practice yesterday. We didn't have shoot around. I don't think the day before because we're trying to prioritize. Like I said, rest and so for our guys to be able to retain what we're trying to explain to them and do, and then they go execute it without actually going through it live or going through it semi live. I, I give them a lot of credit. That's that. That's the feel that they need to have because uh, these games are coming quick, and uh, we're going from East Coast to West Coast, West Coast to East Coast, and teams are still playing. You know, back in the day, teams were resting. You just love these last six, seven games because you can experiment and rest, guys. We can't do that. So I, I applaud our team for uh, retaining the information that we're giving them on a night in, night out basis. Coach, two quick defensive ones for you. What do you feel like worked well for you guys in pick and roll defense, specifically with James and also the Clippers, only 36% uh, in the paint tonight? What do you think was working there? I, I, you know, we, we, uh, we always say uh, play physical, and I thought our guys did. I thought uh, our bigs were really, really good at the point uh, of the pick and roll, you know, they reverse hard, and they were up to touch, and they did a great job of mixing in some blitzes that were really aggressive with high hands and we put them on their heels and you know when you get blitzed time after time after time or the coverages are changing it throws you off also you know that we took away the pocket James is really good at making that pocket pass and then our weak side defense was was fantastic you know we we, we our primary tag guy was great so when that big caught he couldn't just go and dunk it all the time and and then we rotated out the shooters so I thought our guys were just on a string tonight uh, starting with being really physical uh, on the defense end of the floor they were on a string uh, always in the right spot when the ball moved everybody moved and everybody covered and or protected uh, uh, each other and that was that was a uh, uh, beautiful to watch and same when, when with the dribble drive when the dribble drive happened or we broke down defensively somebody stepped up and played big at the rim we sunk and we filled on the backside and then we just sprayed out and covered the three-point line as best as we could they were you know shooting 54 55 percent from the three in the first half and I think they were six for 11 and and, and you know they, they ended the game that was at five for, for for 16 the rest of the way so we did I, I give our guys credit they, they did a heck of a job in both those areas Thanks, everyone. thank you guys mm -hmm.